Today on Applied Science, I want to talk about the chemicals that are in this product called Fix-A-Flat, how they work to seal a tire and the effect they can have on tire pressure sensors. A while ago, I was in the parking lot of a hardware store, and when I came out of the store, I noticed that my car had a flat tire. And unfortunately, I didn't have the wheel lock key for the car, so I couldn't take the wheel off and put the spare on. So I went back in the store and got a can of this, Fix-A-Flat. And uh, knowing that my car had tire pressure sensors, which are required by law since 2007, I was relieved to see that the can even said, tire sensor safe. So I put this in the wheel or in the tire and it works great. Seals the leak up and pumps the tire up enough so that you can get to a gas station and then fill it up with air all the way. However, I didn't read the fine print, which says that you uh, must clean this out within days, preferably, or else it might have a bad effect on your tire pressure sensor. And, you know, I, I realize that this is a temporary fix, and um, I did leave it in the tire for <laughs> four months. But anyway, uh, it does actually kill tire pressure sensors, and I did have to go to the dealer and get this fixed. So first, let's uh, try this out in a little tire simulator that I've built so we can see what it looks like, and then we can talk about the chemicals that are in there. So I've built this little metal chamber, and what I'm going to do is put a piece of about two millimeter thick rubber at the bottom of the chamber, and then add this plastic shell to the side, and a rubber o-ring on the top, and this has a, a Schrader valve here, so we can treat it just like a real tire. So I'll clamp all this together, and then we'll try puncturing the rubber and putting the fix-a-flat in to see how it works. So what I'm gonna do is pump this up, and you got to be pretty quick since the volume in here is so small, um, just a few seconds of inflation would bring it up to full tank pressure. Okay, we're coming in just over 35, so that's pretty reasonable. And as you can see, the pressure is causing a little bit of a dimple in the rubber in the bottom there. I don't know if you can see that. Okay, to simulate a puncture, let's say it's you're not having a good day, and you're driving along and a 10-penny nail goes uh, through your tire, and now you have a 10-penny nail sticking out. What's interesting is that the uh, simulated tire here is still holding pressure. So as you can see, maybe it's leaking slowly, but we're still pretty close to 35 PSI. And that's because the surface of the nail is very smooth, and it, it is rubber, so it is sealing around the nail. But let's say it's really not your lucky day, and the nail is actually still attached to the piece of wood in the road, and so it doesn't actually get lodged in your tire, it actually just punctures it and then pulls back out. So now you can hear we've got a real leak on our hands, and you can even see the puncture if we look closely. So let's try out the fix-a-flat. The directions say to shake the can and then attach it to the tire stem and hold the can upright and dispense the entire contents. Now I'm not going to do that into this small tire simulator, I'm just going to put a small squirt in. Okay, here we go. Okay, maybe not the best product uh, video in the world. It is quite messy, and the fact that we're doing this in such a small volume makes it difficult to use the product as they suggested. However, uh, I believe it did seal the leak in here, so with its own inflation ability, it's got the thing up to about 10 PSI, which is certainly better than zero. And I'm just gonna add a little bit of air here to see uh, if the leak will reopen. So there you have it, it's not hissing anymore. And if we check it, we've got 35 PSI, and I couldn't guarantee it's going to hold that for four months like it did in my car, but it certainly isn't hissing like it was when we took the nail out. If we look down at the puncture site, we can see the black rubber has a pierce that's been filled with the white color that's from the fix-a-flat. So let's talk about what the chemicals are in this and how it works. If you ever want to know the chemical composition of a product, a good place to start is its material safety data sheet. 
And so I searched for Fixaflat MSDS and came up with these three substances. The first one is heavy aromatic solvent naphtha, and they even are required to give you the CAS number, which you can search for to get even more information. Uh, this is basically paint thinner. Naphtha is just a mixture of solvents, so instead of xylene or toluene, which are specific molecules, naphtha just means that it's a mixture of these things. And aromatic means that the molecules are ring-shaped. This solvent can dissolve rubber, and so it makes sense to have it in a fix-a-flat product where we have to sort of merge the site of the puncture back together. So this solvent can dissolve a little bit of the tire, and as the puncture site gets, as the two pieces of the puncture get pushed back together, uh, it will help the tire seal. The second ingredient is norfluorane, which is an unusual name for R134A. And that might sound familiar because that's actually refrigerant that's used in automotive air conditioning systems. And almost certainly the purpose of that is to actually inflate the tire. So it wouldn't work just to put CO2 or nitrogen or something in this can because it would have to be pumped up to many hundreds of PSI in order to get your tire up to 35 because the volume in the tire is so much higher. But using something like R134 is a good trick because we can put liquid R134 in this can and then when you squirt it into the tire, the liquid will boil and produce a lot more gas. So it has a better inflator, uh, it has a better inflation quality to it than just straight gas. Lastly, this one was a bit of a puzzler. It says ammonia, and it's a very small amount, less than 0.2%. So I puzzled about that for a while and also realized that there's an ingredient that they're not telling us about. So if you look at this stuff, it's not at all clear. In fact, it's very, very opaque. And the solvent and the norfluorine and the ammonia are all clear gases or liquids. So there's a substance that they're not required to put on the MSDS because it's not hazardous enough. And if I had to take a guess, I would be almost sure that it's latex rubber. And the reason I think that is because the color of this is very much like natural rubber. It has that kind of off-white uh, cream color to it. And the ammonia is often used as a stabilizer to keep latex liquid uh, be while it's being processed. So my theory about how this works is that at the puncture site, the latex is liquid, and then as the ammonia dissipates, the latex turns to a solid, and the naphtha will glue that solid into place, and the norfluorane is boiling away, inflating the tire. So all these things work together to uh, fix a flat tire. The tire pressure sensor is wireless, and I think there's probably a battery inside here, but this whole thing mounts inside the wheel, or inside the tire, and the valve stem pokes out through the wheel as normal. And as you can see, there is a sensing port, presumably here, and as we saw, this fix a flat is really good at sealing small holes, so it's possible that it would seal this up. However, since this entire thing is inside the tire, even if this were completely covered with rubber, it should still be sensing the pressure since the pressure is still pushing down on the diaphragm in here that's sensing pressure. So I'm going to try to open this up and we'll see if um, there was an obvious cause of failure. I started my failure analysis by measuring the battery voltage and surprisingly I found that the battery was completely dead measuring just about 100 millivolts. So I figured that the most obvious cause of death was that the uh, tire inflator liquids had seeped into the battery somehow through the conformal coating and killed it chemically. So I desoldered the battery from the board and hooked it up through a 10 ohm resistor here and we're measuring the current draw with the oscilloscope. And what's interesting is that it doesn't appear to be sleeping properly. So it's almost down to zero now, but very often it will wake up like now and it's drawing a solid milliamp and these periods of one milliamp draw will last for what appear to be to me to be more than 50 percent time. So the thing's drawing an average of at least half a milliamp or maybe a full milliamp. And the battery that was in there is rated for 550 milliamp hours. So at a one milliamp draw that's you know 550 hours ideally and that's about 22 days if it keeps it up constantly. So not too surprising that the thing died it's possible that the tire fixer liquid seeped into the sensor and since the circuit isn't functioning properly now it's not ever getting to its low power sleep state 
uh, because the sensor is no longer functioning properly. It's an SP311 sensor, and I found a data sheet for the SP100 series sensors, but the pin uh, the pinout is not compatible with this one, even though the package looks almost exactly the same. And I'll put the links to that in the description. Okay, see you next time. Bye.